Okay, in this lesson, we're going to talk about the ministry pathway at the local church. Now, hopefully, you've already spent some time understanding what the mission of every local church is all about. You should make sure to watch that before you get into this topic and lesson. But today, we're going to talk about the ministry pathway. Now, a ministry pathway describes the practical steps that it takes for a person to seek and find God through the ministry of the local church. So we're talking here about when someone walks into your local church, you know, whether it's a neighbor that you invited, whether it's just someone off the streets, it doesn't matter who it is. We're talking about how do we get them from where they are now? You know, maybe they don't know anything at all about Jesus, about who Jesus is, what he's all about. Now, maybe they do. Maybe they're Christians from another church. It's important for any kind of person that's walking into your church, for them to understand very clearly what the ministry pathway is. How do I get from A to Z in the church? What is A and Z? You know, what, what is Z? What is the win? And obviously the win is to help them to pursue God, help them to truly have a pursuit of God that's personal and full, what we call full circle, where they're trusting Jesus for their salvation if they haven't already, where they're living in their lives to honor God on a regular basis in their marriage, in their family, at work, at school, whatever, and where they're actually able to, they're empowered and equipped to help other people pursue God as well. So that's what Z is. You know, if you want to get them from A to Z, we want to get them from wherever they are now to becoming a full circle pursuer of God, someone who's going all the way and is really living their lives as a disciple who makes disciples. The ministry pathway is the way that we describe how to get from A to Z, and that's what this video is all about. Now, we think there are three practical steps in your ministry pathway, and here's the first one. People need to discover the truth. Now, we, we think in the local church, the best way to do this is for them to discover the truth in what we like to call a gateway service, you know, where, where we recognize as a local church that there are going to be some people who want to learn about who, who God is. They, they, wanna, they need their sort of their first exposure to the truth. Now, again, you might have a lot of people that come in and they're already Christians, but if you if you as a local church ministry, if you're only think about thinking about reaching those people, if you're only thinking about preaching to those people, you're really going to miss the opportunity to help people become followers of Jesus. If you're only thinking about people who are far enough along on the continuum that they that they know who Jesus is, maybe they've already been to another church, maybe they're just transferring their membership. That's really not who we believe you should be trying to reach in this postmodern culture, this post Christian culture. We need, as a local church, we need to somehow engage those people who are far from God. And the, the, the discovery experience, that step one of discovering the truth, we think happens really, really great in, in a local church weekend service setting. That's how we like to do our church ministry. We like to think about people coming in and we like to preach with them in mind. We like to think everything from the lobby to our kids ministry, to our youth ministry. Everything has them in mind because we want them to begin to discover the truth. Now, this is interesting. From Acts chapter 9, we see a great example of this. And the apostle Paul, he's someone who was far from God. He didn't know it, but he was far from God. Look at how God approached him. In Acts chapter 9, verse 3, it says that Paul was on his way to Damascus on this mission to persecute Christians, and a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him, and he fell to the ground, and he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And we see what Saul said here in verse 5. He said, who are you, Lord? This is a great example. Paul is a perfect example of someone who's at A. You know, he's someone that is that needs to be approached. He still needs to discover the truth. And the way that God did this for him is he approached him, and God doesn't usually do this anymore. He leaves us to the local church to sort of dawn the light on people now. But, but Saul's response is really, I think, is really uh, indicative of a typical seeker's response. Like, who are you? Like, what is this thing? What it, who, what's this about? Who is this Jesus guy? What's the Bible? Why should I care? All of these things. This is what the first step is all about, is helping people begin to see the light. Helping people begin to have the light dawn on them. It's the first part in the journey. 
And this is what the step one is about. This is what discovery is all about. And once you get to that, you can go to the next step. And the next step is this. It's when people share the truth with the people around them to help them pursue God. So if the first step is discovery of truth, and maybe that happens in your local church service, the next step is getting people to talk about it. Because if you only leave uh, your, your ministry, the truth, if you only leave it at the church at, on a Sunday morning, on a weekend service, whatever, if that's the only time anyone's ever exposed to it, listen, they'll never, they'll never continue. They'll never, they'll never pursue God. God has designed it that after that discovery, that sort of light has dawned experience, that the next step is you have to share it. You, ha- you need someone to talk about it with. You need someone to process it with so you can really have that epiphany. Let's go back to Paul's story. In verse 10, it says there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord spoke to this guy, this Christian, and he said, Ananias, and he said, yeah, God, he knew, he already knew God. He said, go over to Straight Street, to the house of Judas. When you get there, you got to ask for this guy from Tarsus named Saul. He's praying to me right now. And and Ananias was like, you know, if you know the story, he's like, no, no, I don't want to do this. I've heard about this guy. I don't want to do this. But but what we see is God is, he's getting ready to reveal himself more fully to Saul. Now remember, Saul at this point, he saw the light, but he was blinded. He didn't really see it. There was still sort of a veil covering him. He didn't really get it because, and I think it's not because Jesus couldn't have shown it to him on the road to Damascus. I think it's because Jesus wanted to show us the method that he uses. He wanted to show us the pathway that's normative. He is not going to take people from step one to step two to step three all by himself. I know it can happen, but that's not how he normally does it. He normally does it through his people. Ananias was the guy that God decided to use. He wasn't some pastor, some some theologically trained person. He was just a believer. And, And God said, I'm going to use you to take him to the next step. Let's see what happens in that verse. In verse 17, it says, so Ananias went and he found Saul and he laid his hands on him. And he said, brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then instantly, verse 18, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. And then he got up and was baptized. What a cool picture of how it works. You know, the gateway experience, someone comes to your church, they start to get exposed to the light, but they're they're probably still blind. You know, they probably still can't see it. They've got this veil over their eyes and that veil will not be lifted until you can get them talking to someone outside of that experience, that Sunday experience, until you can get them talking to someone about the truth, until you can equip them and empower them to bring that into their everyday lives, somehow set them up with an Ananias. Now, there are three levels of this, and we'll get into this in the next lesson, the three levels of this kind of of connection, this kind of sharing. The first level is they're they're probably just going to talk to their friends and their family about it. You know, maybe they, they hear a sermon, they go home, they might talk in the car ride home, they might talk to their spouse about it. Maybe if they have a friend, they might just sort of talk uh, initially with a friend a little bit about it. They might be a little bit open to that. But the next level of sharing is what we call the small group and mentor level, level of sharing, that second level. It's where they get connected then into a small group. They can get connected with a mentor and this is where they can really begin to process the truth. This is what Ananias was initially for Paul. He was, in essence, he was sort of his first mentor. God was going to use him to sort of trigger that veil falling off of his eyes and him really being able to see it and responding to it and moving forward. And by the way, the third level, and we'll get into this later, but the third level of sharing is when they share as a group leader or a mentor, not with the group leader or the mentor, but when they share as the group leader or mentor. Now, not everyone's gonna necessarily be a small group leader, but every single person can be a mentor. Every single person can share with someone else. Ananias wasn't some genius. He was just a normal believer. 
every believer should, you should have an expectation. You should have this, your ministry system designed to equip every believer to do this, whether it's a parent mentoring his kids because parents are pastors at home, or whether it's a, a youth leader that's mentoring, or a young person in youth group that's mentoring a younger person in youth group, whether it's a, a spiritual mentor in your youth program or in your adult small group program, whatever it is, mentors are so critical and every single person can do it and it's important for them to do it if the church is to work right. Okay, so step one is people discover the truth and step two is that people share the truth with the people around them and step three is that people apply the truth through opportunities to lead and to serve. Now, this is when people start living out their faith, you know, just like Paul did here once he met Ananias and the scales fell. Look at what it says in verse 19. Saul stayed with the believers there for a few days. Notice that for a few days and immediately he began preaching about Jesus in the synagogues, saying, he is indeed the Son of God. Man, Paul continues to be a great model for this pathway, this ministry pathway, what we like to call the pursuit pathway. You know, he was exposed to the truth, he discovered it, he, he really understood it, he really began to process it, the, the scales dropped when he, was, when he shared with someone and connected with another believer. And now, look at this, it didn't take long, now he's out there applying it in his life. Now, again, you can apply it by being a mentor yourself, by sharing the truth, by, by, by letting other people know about who Jesus is and what you found, that's great. But you can also apply it by serving opportunities, ministry opportunities at the church, by living out your faith at home, all of these things fall in this category of applying the truth. But don't forget that ultimately application of truth should be reproducing itself. It should be turning back on itself and, and feeding into the church and feeding into individual relationships and feeding back into mentoring and small groups and the ministry and all of this stuff. And this this is when the ministry pathway is completed. This is when you really know that you've got a church that is going to move forward into the future.